Hey y'all, my name is Yvette and welcome to my channel. Today I am doing the drunk book tag. I was not tagged to do this, but the original creators of the tag are Chelsea Dolling Reads and Julie over at Pages and Pins, and I will leave both of those videos linked down below. Earlier today, I went to a margarita and taco festival, and I had a really good time, and now I'm feeling pretty good, so I feel like this is a good time to film this video. During me answering these questions, I will be drinking, and I'll be drinking Tonio Jose, which is an apple infused tequila that I got last year in Mexico. So if you'll bear with me, here we go. The first question is wine coolers. You're 16 and you finally managed to sneak one of your mom's Smirnoff ices. What is your most guilty pleasure reads? Well, I don't really know what counts as a guilty pleasure read. I had such a hard time with this question because I just don't know what would count like you read something but you feel bad about it but like wouldn't you just dnf it if you feel bad about it but then i started thinking about comics and i came up with red hood and the outlaws by scott lobdell this comic gives me so many mixed feelings because Red Hood. Red Hood is the second Robin of Batman who died and came back to life and was kind of an anti-hero. His name is Jason Todd. And I am such trash for Jason Todd. I love Jason Todd, Jason Todd with all of my heart and I will read any comic that he shows up in. But I also really do not like Scott Lobdell's writing. And this is a guilty pleasure read because I read it knowing I wouldn't like it because of the writer. But I'll read it anyways because it has a character I love in it. The second question is beer. You've made it to college and are hosting your first kegger. Pick your favorite new adult or college aged book. And my gut reaction to this question is to say the Foxhole Court Trilogy by Nora Sokovic. However, Right now, I'm reading Treasure by Rebecca Weatherspoon, and it is really, really good. It is a new adult FF romance between two college students, one of whom is a stripper. And the way they met is that one girl was in a bachelorette party, and they all decided to go to a strip club. And the stripper that gives her a lap dance later shows up in one of her college classes so I have they have like this prior connection and then they grow their relationship during their classes because they have similar similar ambitions and it's just so so sweet and I'm, I'm actually like halfway through this book so I can't like fully endorse it but if I could endorse half this book I would because I've half really enjoyed it and it's so good and I just really love FF romance like we don't have enough FF romance in the world the third question is tequila you partied a little too hard last night and drank a little too much Jose Cuervo what is a book you never want to see again or your least favorite book and for this one I'm going with a girl as a half form thing by Ermir McBride and this is my least favorite book for a bunch of different reasons the first reasons the first is the prose the prose is in this weird fragmented stream of consciousness prose that's difficult to understand at first and it took me a while to figure out what was going on and that's fine but then the subject matter is a girl who's dealing with being molested by her uncle and her brother having cancer and when I got to the point where I finally realized what was going on I looked up spoilers for the book to see if it was worth reading because at that point I really really wanted to put the book down and once I looked up spoilers I was like what the fuck this is fucking tragedy porn it came out as tragedy porn to me as a woman just suffering I, I feel like we have a lot of books about women suffering and to not have that resolved in a, in a in any kind of way is just really sad and there's no point to it and I realize that some women that's that is their lives they suffer and they suffer and they suffer and they die but that's just really not my cup of tea to read 
it might be if the prose is really beautiful, but here it was just that fragmented stream of consciousness that was really hard to follow. If you like this book, you're smarter than me, but I really don't like it. Number four is Beer Bong. What's a book you read super fast? And this would definitely be The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. From now to the end of time, I will never stop singing my praises about this book. It's about 400 pages and I finished it in like one or two days because it was just that good. It is about a bisexual Cuban-American woman who is passing as white in old Hollywood and after she's lived this life of marriages and divorces and scandal, she has hired this journalist to write down her life story and it's just really interesting and when I first heard about this book, people said it was queer and I underestimated how queer it was because when I was reading it, I was like, fuck, this is so queer and it makes me so happy. But besides the queerness, it is also a really good plot, it's really good pacing, it's really good writing and I read it really fast. So it answers this question. Question number five is Spring Break. You've thrown your ambitions to the wind and end up having a sexy night you'll never forget. What's your favorite smutty read? And for this question, I'm not entirely sure what to answer because I haven't read a lot of smutty reads that I've really enjoyed that I can call my favorite. There are some smutty reads that I've liked so far, like um, Santino Hassel, he writes good MM romance is with smutty stuff in it. Um, I've read his series about football players. The first one is Little Contact and then Oh no, did I suppose? Number six is Screwdriver. What is the most twisted <laughs> book you've ever read? And for this one, I am going with the Deadly Class graphic novel by Rick Remender. And this is a graphic novel about a kid going to an assassin school. And that's kind of like the quick what this is about. But he, the kid who goes to this assassin school is like an orphan nobody. He was raised in an orphan in I think the 80s where he was terribly abused. And then when he goes to this assassin school, this assassin school is separated into different classes. Like you have like the white gang and then you have like the cholas and the Mexican gang. And then you have like the yakuzas and the Japanese gang and he doesn't really fit in with anyone. And then there's a bunch of twisted stuff that happens. Like I think at one, at one point if I'm remembering correctly there's some bestiality where a man fucks a goat and I don't think it can get any more twisted than that. So this is a series that I really really like but also trigger warnings for physical assault, sexual assault, mm, emotional abuse, honestly anything under the sun, killing, gore, blood, murder, violence, all that good stuff. It's all in here. It's twisted. It's great. I love it. Number seven is Long Island Iced Tea. The melting pot of alcoholic beverages. What is your favorite diverse reads? And that is like asking me to pick Hey, you have three dogs, which is your favorite dog? You can't pick a favorite dog, they're all your babies. However, my go-to answer this to this question is... When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie McLemore. This is a Latinx queer book. It's magical realism. It's about a girl who grows roses out of her wrist and a trans boy from Pakistan that hangs roof, hangs moons in the sky, that help children through their nightmares. This is a fucking beautiful book and I love it. Number eight is Sex on a Beach, a drink that's great in theory but wasn't all it's cracked out to be. What is a book that didn't live up to the hype? And that one is going to be Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is a book that I've seen many people praise and I don't fall for, fault them for that because there's a lot of things to love about this book but this was advertised to me as a gay Harry Potter and when you say this is a gay Harry Potter my expectations automatically go through the roof and when I read this book I just really didn't get it. It's okay, like it's not, it's not bad at all. 
it's it's a it's a good book, but it's not a great book in my opinion. I was just I was just expecting so much more, and it just didn't live up to the hype. Number nine is wine. You've just gone through a rough breakup, so you've parked yourself in bed with your favorite bottle of wine, some ice cream, and a bucket for your tears. Name a book that has made you cry out all of your feels and there are very few books that have like legitimately made me cry. I could answer, answer any Adam Silvera book but for the purpose of this question I will say They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This book, as the title says, both of the characters die at the end of the book. In the beginning of the book it's made clear um, there's this company that tells you if you're gonna die that day. So you get a call and it's like, hey, it's your last day on earth. And these two teenage boys, it's their last day. So they meet up through an app and they spend their last day together. And because it's Adam Silvera, these, <laughs> these both these boys fall in love and it's just very sweet, but then they both die. And it's just very sweet, but bittersweet. It, didn't leave me in complete shambles, but I still cried. Number 10 is Strip Club, your favorite naked hardback. And for this one, I'm going to do two because I have two very pretty, pretty naked hardbacks that I really want to show off. And the first one is the Star Wars trilogy. This is episode four, five, and six. And this, like the original old school trilogy, whatever. And this has R2-D2 themed cover. And it's just like, really really beautiful and I love it and it's naked and also I love it when the pages are uh, I don't know the right term for it but they have color to them the edges I, I don't know which is also something that, that the next book has the next book has purple pages compared to the silver and this is It Devours by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Jeffrey Craner and this is a book that coincides with the Welcome to Night Vale podcast, which is kind of my OG podcast. It was my OG podcast that got me into like all other podcasts. This is about a weird town in a desert where strange things happen and it's queer and it's diverse and it's horror-ish but not really and but it is and hard to describe. If you're looking to get into podcasts, I would say try this one because I know I've heard of a lot of people this is their first podcast and now I'm going off of a tangent and this was just supposed to be about pretty hardbacks but if you get me talking about podcasts I will talk about them forever so this is a very pretty hardback it is gorgeous it is yellow and the pages are purple and I love it and very pretty hardback that's it for the drunk book tag I am not going to tag anyone because I'm not 100% sure who drinks and who doesn't. So if you're watching this and you like the questions and you drink, please feel free to do this tag and say that I tagged you. And if you don't like drinking and you still like the questions, feel free to do this tag and say that I tagged you anyways. I hope that you enjoyed this video because I had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.